Hello everyone, Bobby Howard here, host of The Schooner Pod, and welcome to the first episode of my series, Football Feast. In this series, we're going to take a look at the most iconic food item from each of Oklahoma's away opponents, and try to recreate it a bit. First off, we have the Western Carolina Cowdermounts from Cullowee, North Carolina. If you haven't heard of Cullowee, well, you aren't alone. Nestled out in the hills of far western Carolina, with a population of just over 6,000, this FCS school is by far the smallest we'll feature on this show. Now, considering the top restaurant in Cullowee appears to be a local Chick-fil-A, we're gonna pivot and do a regional staple. The Western Carolina Pork Shoulder. Okay, yeah, I'm jumping in the fire a bit here. As we know in Oklahoma, barbecue is religion. However, in North Carolina, it's really more of a holy war, where you have the Western Carolina side and the Eastern Carolina side in a fiery debate about which side's better. East has a whole hog style with a thin vinegar sauce, and the West focuses just on the shoulder, uh, but they add ketchup, which is a thing that a lot of uh, Easterners consider to be heathenism. Although the one thing both sides can come together on is roasting an outsider for cooking the barbecue incorrectly. Incorrectly. So Lincoln, we might end up having something in common. Just the worst thing possible. But it's a risk I'm willing to take. Let's begin. First things first, we are going to dry our meat to prepare it for our rub. Now, I do want to address the elephant in the room here. We're using a boneless pork shoulder as we cannot find bone in where we were at. If you have the option, always go bone in. But either way, feel free to flame us. I totally get it. This is a bit of a sin in North Carolina barbecue, but this is the best we could do. Now onto our rub inspired by the great Joshua Weissman. In a bowl, mix together one tablespoon of Spanish paprika, one tablespoon of light brown sugar, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, three tablespoons of kosher salt, and about one tablespoon of fresh ground black pepper. You can add more to be safe depending on the size of your shoulder. Once you have your rub ready, get to, well, rub it. Make sure you coat all sides of the shoulder and use as much as you can. Once complete, we are going to dry brine this bad boy in the fridge overnight to maximize the flavor of the rub. With the shoulder in the fridge brining overnight, we can now get to work on our signature mop sauce. In a bowl, combine one cup distilled vinegar, a fourth cup of ketchup, we used Whataburger Spicy for a little bit of fun, a fourth cup of apple juice, had to flex a little bit with the Martinelli's, one teaspoon of hot sauce, three tablespoons of light brown sugar, a half tablespoon of Morton coarse salt, one teaspoon of crushed red pepper, and one teaspoon of finely ground black pepper. Whisk to combine and pour into your finest squirt bottle where it will sit overnight to let the flavors get to know each other. When the time for smoking arrives, fire up your smoker to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure the fat cap is facing upward so that the pork is basted in its own fat while it cooks. Every hour or so, make sure to tend to your pork with your mop sauce. If you have a true barbecue mop, use that, but I went with a squirt and brush method. This really adds a different degree of flavor to your pork and gives it that distinct North Carolina flavor that we are really looking for here. About an hour or two before completing, wrap the pork in foil to finish and return to the smoker. Cook for around 12 hours or until the internal temp reaches 195 to 205. Once our desired temp is reached, we are going to scoop the pork up and let it rest for about 45 minutes. Once our pork is nice and rusted, it's time to dig in. You can use tongs or a fork, but honestly, I'm a sucker for these meat claws. No matter what you use, make sure to grab a bite and enjoy the first bit of your labors. And I, I gotta say, this turned out really good. The pork is juicy and flavorful. The sauce pairs really nice with the pork in a way that doesn't overpower the meat, but adds quite a bit of acid to really cut the richness of it all. Once your pork is nice and shredded, serve it however you like. My go-to is a nice sandwich, just as is, which allows me to savor the flavor of the meat and the sauce properly. If you want to level up your experience with pickles or slaw, be my guest, it's just not my style. All right, everyone. Thank you all so much. This pulled pork is remarkable. The vinegar sauce goes really great with it. You can see what the Western Carolinians have going on here. And you know, it's, it's incredible. Is it brisket? No, it's not my favorite, of course, but you want an easy, forgiving, incredible barbecue? This is your move. All right. 
For me and the entire Schooner Pod team, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week with uh, Nebraska and the Runza. A special thanks to Sam Ryder for helping produce this magnificent video. Without him, this would be a mess in many, many different ways. Of course, massive thanks to Thomas Barrett for not only letting me borrow his smoker, but for giving me a ropes course on smoking barbecue as well. This series is certainly a departure from anything I've done in the past, but I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to making more, all the while hopefully getting much, much better. See you next time. Boomer Sooner.